this case, you are the early bird, you are going to catch the anointing. First, we will hear the prophet Martin Fogg. He has come here to be with us for the next one hour. He will speak to us in the man of God. And uh, we will see another Sunday. Uh, his message could not be completed within the one hour. And we agreed that we will have him another Sunday. And that is the day. Please help me to welcome the prophet, the servant of God. I got it. Prophet Mark Welcome to this altar. This church loves you. We love America. And we thank God for joining us together with you. God bless you very much. Welcome, servant of God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Lift your voice and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just talk to the boss. Arete Shalahando Keta Say. The Lord is going to move very powerfully here today. I have too much to say, but I'm going to abbreviate a lot and bring some more later. Lift your hands and begin to pray. Karandele Shona Sandele Shai. Seto shekai to say. Woo! I feel it. Hai ti she. Sando chande. Mm. Saba de debo. Woo! Right now, something's happening. Lift your hands. Today, the Lord's going to give impartation for business people and ministry people and people to rise in life. People to become great kingdom expanders and advancers, but people to be blessed by God. And I declare to the spirit of poverty and to the spirit of religion and to the demons that have kept the nation so backward for too long, your day is over. God's going to begin to bless his own elect. God's going to do something for you in this next season. You couldn't even imagine it would happen so fast. Lift your hands. I bring you greetings from my boss, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, the Alpha and the Omega, the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, the bishop and overseer of our souls, the bishop over every bishop, the bishop and leader over every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. He's here right now. Can you feel him walking through here right now? Yesterday, I was in a mighty visitation of the Lord, and for the whole day, almost two days, and I saw the angels coming here. They're here already. As we walked on the platform, they're here. They're moving, bringing things to people. Bringing things to people right now. You, hey, hope, shy. You want, you watching by television. You watching by television. Receive this touch in your homes. There it is. Receive it. Receive from the Lord right now. The Holy Ghost Himself is walking into your life in a new dimension from today. And you're going to begin to see His hand. You're going to begin to see His hand. I have a new word for Kenya, a new word for Nairobi, but I don't even want to get to it yet. I feel like what's important is what's happening in this room and through the airwaves to the people that are here. Lift your hands. You're the first partakers. I love to be with a man of God of such great stature like Archbishop Harrison because he can host his thing. He's big on the inside. Smith Wigglesworth used to say, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. <laughs> and he said, I, I work by faith. He said, if I don't see something happening, I make it happen. If I don't see the Lord moving enough yet in a scenario, I make it happen. I push it forward. And that's the kind of people that God loves. Rashe Karito Osai Gisho. Many preachers are going to rise from this visitation. Many business people and entrepreneurs 
are going to rise in a new business to be blessed. Some of you from today, I ordain you. We ordain you. Bishop and my, I'm sure Bishop would feel the same. We ordain you to go and prosper in the marketplaces. We ordain you to go and prosper in your life. We ordain you to move up in life. I'm very concerned about people that are not high up the ladder yet. But the Lord wants to push you there. Just keep praying right now. Keep praying. Raste to sai. Enchalaya. Enchalaya. Oh yes, Holy Spirit. Ereka is a level wise dai de jede. This is so deep. It's so deep what I'm seeing and feeling. The atmosphere of heaven is falling here. Receive it. It's for you. He's come for you. Malandele. Seleheshe. Consolatiakai. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me go ahead with it. The word of the Lord comes to me, it came to me for the city of Nairobi. Lift your hands, everybody. And for the nation of Kenya. And this is my prophet that speaks to you, has spoken over the years, and you've seen the demonstrative miracles of creation, of new things, based on the voice of God. Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing except he first reveal the secret to his servant, the prophet. Through a prophet, uh, the, land, the people were preserved and protected and blessed and increased Hosea 12 13 Peter said prophecy did not come by the will of man but by the impulse human impulse human desire but it came through holy men of God that spoke by the Holy Ghost and the Lord says oh Nairobi oh Kenya do you not know that I'm about to rip the veil off of you and expose you more to the world. Do you not know that international trade and investment and the economy, everything's going to begin to increase? Do you not know that the infrastructures are going to be developed yet again and are going to beautify this place? The Lord says, the works you've seen going on, did not my servant speak it from time past when there was nothing there? But the Lord said, it's nothing compared to what's about to happen. Lift your hands, everybody. As the Lord's doing it in the nation, he's also going to do it in your life. People are going to rise up to be millionaires in this day. I'm under a greater anointing than I was last time. Last time I was here was so powerful, but I, there's something even deeper we're going to go into here. And as I can have a, our relationship with the Archbishop and we do many more events, it's just going to get deeper and deeper and the people are going to be blessed. Pray in the Holy Ghost. The Lord spoke to me upgrades in every area. The return of tourism. The return of uh, industry. The building up of industries. And what the lockdowns and the pandemic did. God says, I'm reversing it. And things are going to shift now from this month, even before the year is over. Even before the holidays. Things are being put into motion. And God says, even behind the scenes, I'm working through government entities. And I'm doing things through people. I'm doing three things. I'm preparing things like you've never even imagined. It's going to happen so quickly from now until next year. And I saw beautiful hotels, new malls, new restaurants, new places, elegant places. People rising up, getting dressed up. Having the best vehicles, having the best of everything. Lift your hands if you want to claim that for yourself. Those of you that don't have cars, let me prophesy right now. Vehicle, there's a vehicle with your name on it. Lift your hands and claim it right now. There's a vehicle with your name on it. You're going to have it. And it's not so hard to get a vehicle. You know, a few hundred thousand, you could get an old car and clean it up and fix it up and drive yourself. 
Put on your worship music. Tip the windows. You know, have a nice experience. Yeah, you don't have to be beaten up by the external elements. The Lord is going to beautify his house. Bishop, I, I'm going to step out on a limb here. I've never saw, thought of this till this second. I don't know what you're going to do about space. Because this place is already packed to capacity. I don't know what you're going to do next. But I prophesy that God is going to arrange the property and the expansion for you. For many more thousands of people to come into the house of God. I don't know what you have in your mind. We've never talked. I've never even thought about that till right now. Lift your hands. Say, so be it. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm very concerned about you climbing up in life. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm very concerned about you. I speak in faith that you will climb up in life. You will go higher. Come on, talk to them and prophesy with me. Say, you will prosper. You will be in good health. Even as your soul prospers, according to 3 John 2. You'll be blessed. For Psalm 35, 27 said, The Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. I'm his servant, are you? That's not just talking about preachers. Anyone who serves him fits that position. And we on the platform are not here for ourselves. The anointing is here to touch you. Receive it right now. True servants are not aggrandizing to themselves. They're a vessel of the Holy Ghost to people to bring the word of God to help people climb up. Go ahead and give the Lord a praise. Go ahead. Don't, don't miss the walk. Don't miss that. We're here to help you climb. The anointing means to provide what's needed. To smear and rub the oil upon somebody. That they can be blessed. Isaiah, yeah Lord. Isaiah 10, 27. Said the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. The burden taken off of your shoulder. The yoke taken off of your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. That's what we need in our day, more anointing. I prophesy it's going to hit the government houses. I've said this before. It's going to hit the presidential offices. It's going to hit the governors. It's going to hit all the state assemblies. It's going to hit the senators and the parliament house. And all of the members of parliament and all the workers in the government arena. And many are going to get saved and fill with the Holy Ghost and turn themselves around. Go ahead and give the Lord some praise. And the Lord says, I've re released the move that I had my servant here prophesy some years ago when it didn't seem like it was possible in the natural. And he said, I'm releasing an anti-corruption move from heaven upon the entire nation of Kenya. Lift your voice and shout! Corruption in the government, in the society, will become a thing of the past in years to come. That the next generation, the Lord said, that the next generation will not know the degradation that's been happening. Kids will rise up and not know about it. And then if you told them the horror stories of old, they'll say, what are you talking about, Mom? What are you talking about, Dad? I don't, I've never seen this. Keep praying right now for a minute. The Lord said infrastructure. Oh, you've seen the superhighway. You've seen the new expressway. And you've seen the SGR train. Did not my servant, did not, did not I tell my servant here to speak that? Back in the year, even from 2002, <laughs> when Nairobi was a city under the sun, they said, no trees, no all broken roads. How many remember that? But look now, Kenyatta Avenue was like a, like a rural road. Now it's got street lights. And it took a while for people to get used to the lights. They didn't know how to stop. Lift your hands. Everything is changing. Everything is upgrading. And more important than that is what happens in your life. God is more concerned about humans than he is about any natural thing. In fact, he made the natural things for us to have. Should we keep standing or should we sit down? Sit, take your seats, please. God bless you.
Get your Bibles and open to the book of Isaiah. I feel the chapter Isaiah 60 and 61 are very prophetic for our time. And I'm going to read a few things from there. But change is coming. Someone say change is coming. Look at the person next to you and say change is coming for you, theory. My dear, tell them my dear. You like to say that in Kenya. My dear. My dear. Even men say that to other men. I, don't know. I didn't understand that at first. <laughs> when I heard that, I was like, what? You call me dear? Are you kidding me? I'm not a woman. Call me boss, doctor, prophet. Hey, Mr. Buana. Dear. Who's dear? You say that to a lady where I come from. My dear. Dear. So look at your neighbor and say, you like to say that. Hey, dear. Even if it's a man saying it to another man, it's okay. <sighs> You're going to climb up now. Come on, talk to the person next to you and say, you're going to prosper. Yeah, yeah. Everybody say with me, I wasn't born to be poor. God didn't anoint me and touch my life to leave me in poverty. There is no nobility in poverty. Say amen. But there is nobility in being blessed and prospering. A major doctrinal verse. I love from the Bible. We are Bible teachers. Wave your hand to me if you understand that. Bishop, we are. Archbishop, we are Bible teachers. That's what we are. First and foremost, if, foremost is the word of God. Uh, alongside with the power of the Holy Ghost. Confirming his word with signs following. I said this last time. The gospel is a gospel of power. Revelation 5.12, Jesus received power and riches and wisdom and strength and that blessing, glory, and honor. But what did he need it for? He had to take it back from the devil and then give it to us. For what purpose? That we would take dominion. All the way back to the first book, first chapter of the first book of the Bible. Genesis 1.26, I made you after my own image and likeness. Let us, Elohim said, let us. Elohim is the Hebrew word for Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us. If I was in Jamaica and they say let hos, they say it with an H. Hos. They can't say the U, you know. Let hos. Make man in our own image. So lift your hands. Say, I, I'm going to help you with something here. I've been made in the image of God. Say that. So look at yourself and look into your life. Say, what am I doing? Come on, ask yourself the question. What am I doing with this? To take dominion over what? Over everything on the earth. The fact that God said that means that everything we see is our possession. Lift your hands. Now, if another man has it first, you don't need to cover another man's goods. There are ten commandments. You're not to cover covet another man's wife. You're not to cover another man's property. That's his or hers if it's a lady. Leave them alone. Get your own. Look at your neighbor and say, get your own. Look around and say, it's out there. How many acres? I looked at one property that had 25,000 acres as their homestead place. 25,000, I guess you'd call it hectares. That might be like 20,000 hectares. That's their property. Lift your hands, say, there's land for me. One of the things in the covenant that God said he'd give his people real estate. Archbishop, I feel the building. I feel the building. It's, it's like, I didn't think of this before I got on this platform. Just now, lift your hands. I feel, it's like a... It's like an impregnation of something from the Spirit of God. We're going to give birth to that thing. Lift your hands. Begin to pray right now for a minute. There's, there's a new place. Yeah. I don't know if it's here. I don't know where. I don't know anything about it. But I see thousands more people coming through. The revival that I put in you cannot be contained just in this place. It's too small. Some look and say, this is big. And I say, yeah, look at all the people. Thousands of people in attendance here. Give yourself a hand clap for making it to church today. You did a very wise thing by coming. Even to fight through the marathon. Oh my God, they closed the roads. And we're like, what is this? 
You have to be a creative driver in Nairobi to get anywhere when this is going on. <laughs> Isaiah 60. Are you, are you there? The Lord spoke to me the day you invited me. Again, same day. He didn't wait. Sunday, the 6th of November. The Lord spoke to me and said, this is what I want you to say next time. Watch this now. God, God has engraced me to prosper and he's empowering me to succeed. Lift your hands. God has done that. Now, if you're smart, you have no choice but then to jump into it. How many business people are here? Wave your hand. How many people would like to have a business? How many people would like to have a successful business? There's a difference. How many of the touch of God can help you prosper in the marketplace? After the meeting, last time the Lord spoke to me the word expansion. I didn't know what I was saying, you know? Expansion. Lift your hands. It's all in the air. And now that I'm here, I feel it. The Lord's going to get busy. God's going to use you to be involved in the projects. He's going to bless you that you can be a blessing. If you had 10 people in a room and everybody's broke, how on earth can you get anything done? But if half of them were millionaires, let me talk to the choir here. If half of them were millionaires, one could say, I got something nice I can do. We can take a have a project and do something. Lift your hands. I prophesy it's happening for you in Jesus' name. Rostai Tai Sakatai. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Arise and shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness is covering the earth, but don't worry about that. You know what? You need to worry about your kingdom posture and position and never what's going on outside. You need to look inside. I'll give you a good scripture. Paul said, mind your own business. Mind your own business. Work for your business. People are coming to sow seed. You can all do that. For something you want to prosper in, the altar is here. You can do that. I opened it up. I don't have to say that. You know what to do, but it's available. The altar is a holy place where the power of God is upon us here. When you touch this grace, God touches you. And that's why we're here, for the Lord to touch you. He said, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles will come to your light and, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your, watch this, lift up your eyes all round about. And they all gather together and see how they all gather together and they come to you. <sighs> and your sons shall come from afar. <laughs> and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. We're fathers, we're fathers. Women, your mothers, your patriarchs, matriarchs. That's our purpose. To raise up the next generation, to raise up even adults. People are coming to the flow. <sighs> oh, that so gets me. And you shall see and become radiant. That's because of the hand of the Lord is upon you. And your heart shall swell up with joy. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Is this too much? I said, is this too much? And some people, many people read a verse like this and they just go, yeah, I see Isaiah chapter 60. But don't you know this is talking to you? Archbishop preached something very powerful. He told his testimony a few weeks back and uh, when we, we met there at, at a conference and and he was talking about your self-image. And he said how he kept saying what God told him. He kept saying in the face of all adversities, <clears throat> any situations, whatever was going on, 
I heard Kenneth Copeland say that this week. He was saying things like that. He had nothing. God told him what to do. And look today. Today he's the richest preacher in America. You know, he's worth, he's almost worth a billion dollars. He's almost, a, he's probably a billionaire. USD. His property, where the houses his ministry, is 1,500 acres, Eagle Mountain. It used to be a naval air base. And then they had the airstrip for him. He thought, how convenient. I could fly my jets here. I could park them here. The hangars were there. I was there. I touched his planes, and the security got nervous. I said, oh, I put my hands up. I said, hey, boys, I'm, I'm just praying. I'm just talking. Having a moment here. I don't mean any. Hey, look, what, what are you doing? And you see all that. I have to tell you something. What you see determines what you can seize. What you see determines what you can possess. If you look around you and you see nothing but failure, despair, struggle, poverty, everything disheveled, everything messed up, everything backward, how are you going to progress higher? Lift your hands. Put your hand on your eyes right now, everybody. Just touch yourself on your eyes. Let me see. Say, Lord, let me see the vast blessings that you have for me. Let me see the land that you have for me. Let me see the property that you have for me. Let me see the wealth that you have for me. The Lord said, I'm embracing my people to prosper and I'm empowering them to succeed. There's an impartation from heaven happening in this room here right now today. And from today, you're gonna to begin to see signs and wonders. There'll be testimonies of this. of people having breakthroughs in every area of their life. The gospel has many parts. It has the natural part for your natural life. It has the spiritual part for your salvation. There are four things that are so important. Number one is salvation. Number one is a man being born again. Because without, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you cannot enter heaven. You don't receive the gift of eternal life. So that's number one of paramount importance and after that after you're saved now what does god care about your daily life of course he does does god care about your business life your family life of course he does does he care about your health of course he does you need health good health what did third what did the old man john the apostle john who'd been with jesus more than anyone in fact john was the one who laid his head on jesus's chest and his shoulder, and was so close with him. And guess what? The anointing of the Holy Ghost that was on Jesus without measure was pouring into the elder John endlessly for three and a half years after the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus in the River Jordan when he went to be baptized of John. John the Baptist said, who is this? And Jesus, who was the Messiah, said, tell him the things that we're seeing here are of God and he went to be baptized of him and the Spirit of God came down upon Jesus in the Jordan River I've been there I was baptized there with Lester Sumrall we had a trip there his family Dr. Mike Murdoch was with me and we had many things happening there and I got baptized in the Jordan so I know how it is how it looks how it feels and the Spirit of God came down upon him, and from that day he was anointed. And John was right there. Now after all of that, in fact, Jesus had the Spirit of God without measure. And we, the body of Christ, have it with some measures here and there, but as a whole, without measure. Guess what? The Holy Spirit is on the earth. Lift your hands. The Holy Spirit is always somewhere waiting to move for a person that has faith. The Bible says his eyes look to and fro over the whole world to look for one whose heart is perfect toward him, who's looking to him. He looks over millions of people to come and find you. Hey, that's right. You see this lady, all I did was point my finger. I'm sorry, excuse me. The anointing is here. I didn't mean to do that. I just went, you and... <laughs> Lift your hands and receive the touch. That's why we're here for these few moments. Yeah, 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 yeah. From 
today I declare, as God's servant, I declare to you, you will prosper and you will be empowered to succeed from today, from here, today, right now. Receive it! So what was the glory for? What was the wealth of the kings for? What was the brightness of the rising for? For what? <sighs> the camels came. The wealth came. The treasure came, of course. And, and later on in the scripture, he said, he said, even the sons of foreigners shall build your walls. Can you believe that? God can use heathens, foreigners, to give you wealth, money to build. Lift your hands. I prophesy that right now. From Isaiah 60, verse 10. And they shall bring, and kings will come to minister to you. When we get to the 61st chapter, we see more about the purpose of all of this. But let's look on here. They shall call you the city of the Lord. Even the ones who afflicted you and the sons of the ones who afflicted you shall come bowing to you. Let me tell you something that happened for Joseph. Joseph was sold out to die, but God hid him and kept him. And then one day he became the prime minister. He was the manager of all the economic affairs of the entire kingdom. And then the very brothers that, that sold him out had to come during the famine time to look for food. And they were brought into this great place and sure enough, it was their supposedly dead brother who they abused and gave away was now sitting on the throne as the second in command. Someone say praise the Lord. God can do it. Joseph went from the pit to the palace in a day when the time was there. And here's how it happened. In Genesis chapter 41, Genesis chapter 39, 40, and 41 tells the story of the life of Joseph and also, Joseph and also Psalm 105, verses 16, 17, 18. The king said, of everyone in our province, provinces, there is none anointed like this man Joseph because he interpreted my dream. So the Holy Spirit was with Joseph. And one promise in Genesis 39 that Joseph had was he prospered in everything he did prospered. And everyone he was around prospered because the hand of the Lord was upon him. Acts 10, 38, look at Jesus. Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. But God was with him. If God is with you, like he's with me, like he's with us, he, he, it is nothing impossible. And God has big things ahead. Lift your hands, big things. Small things are for children. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, he said, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Galatians 4 verse 1 said, you differ nothing then but from a servant because you don't discern that you're Lord of all. Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And he wants to raise you. Your self-image and how you see yourself through the eyes of God means a lot about your life. Because in life, you don't always get what you ask for all the time or what you want, but you always get what you are. You always get the level that you're at in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. How you perceive God's power in your life. How you're obeying his instructions. The glory came upon, and then all these events happened. Lift your hands and say, it's gonna happen for me. I want you to see Isaiah 60 today from a different perspective. I want you to personalize it. I want you to personalize it. I want you to take scriptures and personalize them. And say, Lord, let me tell you something. God did not write this just for them. He didn't write this just for Isaiah to have a moment to write something powerful. 
Say a big amen. He wrote it for us. Why am I standing on this platform in this year in the third millennia since Christ? There were two. There was, what, the first thousand years, second thousand years? Now we've crossed over into the third day. Why are we standing here today reading the same thing that Isaiah spoke nearly 3,000 years ago? Are you ready for me? Are you feeling me? Can you handle this? Can I teach you like a papa and give you some instruction? You know, and uh, uh, Proverbs 4, Solomon said, Hear my children and follow my instruction, for I give you good doctrine. And don't forsake it. For wisdom is the principal thing. Lift your hands and say, Lord, baptize me in wisdom. Baptize me in knowledge and understanding according to Isaiah 11, verse 2. From today, your eyes will come open. I prophesy that every delay that has kept you stuck is being broken in Jesus' name. Everything that's been in your way, every limitation, every oppression of the devil is being broken. Every environment that's kept you down, kept you stuck is being broken. You're supposed to be walking with kings. Come on, somebody. You're supposed to be walking with great people. Come on, somebody. And you got to seek it out. You can't stay around in the same place. God will leave you there. One thing I learned about God, he does what we do. He says, he said to the pure, I show myself pure. To the profane, crooked, I show myself crooked. One time people wanted to hear, it's amazing. One time people wanted to hear in the Old Testament, it's a bit scary. They wanted to hear something that God didn't want to say. So God put a lying spirit in them to speak it, to, to give people what they wanted to hear. Remember Saul, the king, people chose Saul. But he was an arrogant, rebellious man who lost the kingdom. Lift your hands and say, that shouldn't happen. And God said, I chose David, who became a man after mine own heart. David, with all his frailties, come on, and Solomon, with all his issues too, were the two greatest rulers in human history. Jesus called Solomon the greatest king, but he said, greater than Solomon is now here. What was it about David? Look at the Psalms. He was always crying to God. And the Lord said, I'll bless your house, David, to a thousand generations. Can I tell you something? Someone did a study and figured out that perhaps, if the number is correct, I have to verify, but they think about 247 generations have happened since David. But God said, I'll bless him to a thousand. What was it about him? I have to tell you something. You're gonna, some of you are going to catch this. I hope all you do. Solomon was able to stand as the great king in splendor and riches and wealth and wisdom beyond anybody else ever. How did he get that kind of mindset? He got it from his father, David. So I, I, I adjure you by... The spirit of wisdom and direction and prophetically. Don't stand around with people that can't help you climb. Lift your hands. I speak and prophesy the exit sign to everyone who's wasting your time. I speak and prophesy to everyone who has an agenda on you that's not of God. It's broken from this afternoon in Jesus' name. It's still the morning for a few more minutes. It's broken today in Jesus' name. And God's going to open your eyes to look around you from today. I pray some of my, my this anointing gets upon you. And you begin to see things. They look around and say, wait a minute. That's not right. Wait a minute. They're not right. Yeah, mama. Receive it. <laughs> They're not right. You got to change your environment if you want to change your world. Write that down, somebody. I must change my environment if I'm going to change my world. I must change. I, I must be able to have sight to see what God wants me to see. There's a song I'm going to sing one day. And there's some of the, I'm rewriting the lyrics. And part of it goes, I'm going to see all that he wants me to see. I'm going to be all that he wants me to be, for he covers me, he covers me, he covers me. 
And, and I better, I'm writing this song. I'm going to see all that he wants me to see, and I'm going to be all that he wants me to be. Let's say this together. Lord, I repent for losing time. I repent for wasting time. I repent for allowing things that I shouldn't have allowed. Lord, forgive me of all of it. There's the sin of commission and there's the sin of omission. Omission is something you were supposed to do that you didn't do. And commission is something you did that you were not supposed to do. Lift your hands and say, I repent. You see, people say they want to receive blessing. But you have to get your soul cleaned first. Isaiah 51.10, uh, Psalm 51.10. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a right spirit. Psalm 119, he said to the Lord, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. The laws of God, the laws of life, the laws of success, the laws of biblical economics, the laws of how to live, how to live holy, how to live right. All of these things need to be applied. Haggai, the first chapter said, you have bags and you have pockets, but they have holes in them and keep things keep falling out. And he said, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Part of the gospel is very instructional. It's very correctional. If you can love, cor if you can love correction, you can be a true son. Lift your hands. If you can love correction and wisdom from a father... Like Solomon spoke, like your archbishop will speak, like I'll speak uh, and, and help people say, I see this now, that's a justice, okay? And then things are going to begin to work for you. And then because the anointing is upon us, you tap the grace and you go and prosper. The Lord said two weeks ago on Sunday, the same day I was here, afterwards he said, I've been gracing my people to prosper and I'm empowering my people to succeed. Write that down somewhere. Say, I'm being in grace to prosper. And I'm being empowered to succeed. Whatever you set your hand to should prosper like Joseph. That's a promise from Deuteronomy 28. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed when you go in, blessed when you come out. And even the heathen will fear you because of the power of the covenant working in your life. Even the world's people. Here it says, Isaiah 60 verse 10 said, The sons of foreigners will build your walls. Lift your hands. I command the wealth and the treasures come from everywhere, from the north, south, east, and the west, to build and expand the work of God in Nairobi, Kenya, and throughout the nation. And as the Lord said, throughout East Africa, an oasis place of my glory, the Lord says, I'm making this my habitation. And I'm looking for people who are going to grow up and not act childish when they get blessed. Most people, when they get some money, they have a moment of bling bling and they get like this illusion of grandeur. And God looks at you and says, okay, my child, yeah, I see. Uh, I'm going to help you get over this. When God really wants to bless you, he will disillusion your illusion of grandeur about yourself. He said, don't think higher of yourself, more highly of yourself than you ought to. We're servants, but Jesus said in John 15, and I no longer call you just servants, I call you friends. Are you enjoying this? Are you learning anything? Lift your hands and say, I receive it all. Upgrade. Expansion. New dimensions. Higher heights of glory. They're all for me. I'm to take dominion on the earth. How many want to own some buildings and some land? How many want to own some? How many want to be successful in business? How many want to really have your accounts full that you don't have anything to worry about? One of the names of God is Jehovah Shalom, which means we, we use it for the word peace, but I want to tell you what it means in a deeper Hebrew definition. It means he is the destroyer of chaos. And he wants you to have a life where nothing is broken and nothing is missing. Everything there. And now you have peace. And Jesus even said, if you're having trouble, I'll still give you peace as a spiritual empowerment. Peace and joy. By peace I give you, the world can't give it to you. 
And when the Lord gives it to us, the Lord, when the, when the Lord gives it to us, the world can't take it away. Say a big amen. The Lord said, there's a place I'll build. At Isaiah 60, further on, that will be open day and night. Sanctuary. And he said, the gates will be called praise. Lift your hands. The gates will be called praise. I've seen this in Nigeria. Where men have built places. One friend built a, a church with 100,000 seats. In the church. And at the Friday night meeting, this coming Friday, a week from, no, less than a week, today's Sunday, this coming Friday, he told me personally, face to face, he said, the place will be filled on Friday night, all night prayer. 100,000 people at the all night prayer meeting. Can you imagine such a thing? You have one church, blew up, like this one has, exploded with the expansion of people. Then had another building, then another one, then another one. They said, we have to build something. But he had a reference point. Like King Solomon had his reference point from David, the great king. The scripture calls him the great king and the Lord's anointed, yes? I don't want to scare the children, Bishop, if I may say... I don't want to scare people, but it's true. I got to tell the truth. Can I go a little further? Can I go a little bit? All of the patriarchs of the Bible were all multi-billionaires. USD. Lift your hands. Say, woo, what's wrong with my legs? Woo, come on. There was a study done in the life of Abraham that he was worth more than 200 billion U.S. dollars. And that study was done back in the 60s. So now that would be like 400 billion. You think Elon Musk is rich and Jeff Bezos and the others? God's servants were more than that. It's estimated that Solomon could have literally been a trillionaire. Because he had, one time he sent in 1 Kings chapter 9, he had Hiram, his servant, Solomon didn't go, Hiram didn't go, which meant he had, he had a great structure. Sent them to buy 420 talents of gold to bring it back to build the temple. Lift your hands. What kind of man was Solomon? The Lord spoke to me last Sunday, and I did a message on it uh, this past week. The Lord said, I want you to teach on uh, empowerment revelations from the lives of King David and King Solomon. So I'm just here to give you a concentrated you know, impartation of this. And I'm jumping off the platform in a few couple minutes. But you need to make the Bible and those patriarchs of ours your role model. As the bishop is blessed, you're to be blessed. As Thomas Manton IV is blessed, you're to be blessed. Yeah. Lift your hands and say, I claim the blessing. And I declare right now in advance, and I say this by divine direction, not from, the, not from uh, uh, the will of man. I say this by the Holy Ghost. Some of you in this ministry and some of you watching at home through the television airwaves are going to get so blessed that you're going to be a challenge for some people's minds to even handle. Do you believe I'm a prophet of God? Do you believe I'm a prophet of God? Do you believe? Believe his prophet, 2 Chronicles 20, 20, second part of the verse. And you shall prosper. Did it say you'll get healed and have a nice time, a nice day? No. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. I love how you talk in Kenya. You talk like a roller coaster, like you're going over a mountain. I went to the shop and then I went to the shop. I could do that. You shall prosper believe his prophets and you shall prosper I gotta get to it I have a minute Isaiah 61 let me jump there the Lord spoke about the place that will be open day and night and the gates will be called praise it'll be just a, a phenomenal I believe that's a church I believe that's this church lift your hands 
I, I believe his church is under the covering of the network. Well, Lord, let me prophesy something else. The network is coming forth now. Apostles over apostles in regions of leaders, senior leaders, network men that are submitted completely to you. And they're going to be in different regions and they'll manage and oversee the affairs of the region. And they'll be like an apostolic movement. Apostolic houses, territories, new things, new things in groups of churches. Lift your hands. I see literally if it could be thousands of churches for you. The Lord says, son, the latter house is greater than the former house. Do you think I brought you all this way, says the Lord, to leave you at this stage when there's so much more that you're even seeing? And I know you, we have not talked. I cannot know these things in the natural. But I see it in the spirit. You've been talking with God. And he's been talking with you and saying, you're trying to figure out. You drive around when you're driving. You see it through the windscreen. You're like, where is the place? Where is the expansion? Where are my sons and daughters? More, more, more development, more things. Even a Bible training center. Even a school of business. Even things about economics that can teach the young people. I see different levels of school. And God says, son, you're not going to have to worry about it all because I'm going to raise up the helpers. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Helps and administrations and governments in the work. The deacons, Acts chapter 6. The people that were full of the Holy Ghost, of good report and filled with wisdom. And they're going to rise to the occasion to work in this movement. And the Lord says, you're going to expand, not just through Kenya, but East Africa. I see the other countries. I don't want to name the countries, but I see the whole region of the East African. There's a stamp of a visitation from heaven upon this land. Lift your hands. You're a part of it. And partners with this grace. Everybody get a seed right now. Run up here in the next 60 seconds. Everybody, get a seed right now. Get something that proves. And walk to this altar right now. Just do it. Everybody, everybody, hundreds of people. Come on, quick. I have about one and a half minutes. Put your, put your faith on the altar and say, I'm going to fulfill this word. You're moving very slow. In Nigeria, uh, 200 people would be here already. In fact, they came prepared. Yeah, receive it, Mama. A touch of heaven. A touch of heaven. Yeah. This man has given his jacket. Bless you, son. Bless you, son. Ah Where is he? Lift your Father, I release the blessing upon this man. He gives his coat. Oh, my. Bless you. Bless you. I want you this week to think about what you can sow into this altar. Next meetings, prepare yourself and bring. If you want to put it in the archbishop's hand, just say, I got to make a point of contact. Or throw it on the altar, however he wants. All right, hey. I release a fire for prosperity, blessing, new things, economic breakthrough and empowerment. And most of all, for your eyes to come open and you adjust everything around you. Never stay with people that can't help you fulfill your destiny. Part of your job is every day to be looking for the people and believe in God for the people to come to you that can help you. That can help you. Rashatea. I'm out of time. I love you. I love you. Let's blow a kiss to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands out there everywhere. Keep coming, keep coming. The service is not over. I'm jumping off here. It's midday on the dot. I'm off. I'm honored to come again and again and as the Lord directs. And I love you so much. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? There's only so much time. We'll get into more things in coming days. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise right now? Let his gates be called praise. All right, one quick thing. Isaiah 61 said, you'll rebuild... The waste places of many generations, and that's part of what the blessing is for. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton the Fourth. I love you. God bless you, everybody. Give the Lord some praise. As we receive the mighty, mighty man of God.
who's anointed with fire, Archbishop Harrison. Oh, Dr. Edward. I thank God for the man of God, uh, Prophet Thomas Manto, for, for the good word, for the good ministry, and for the good word he has spoken into my life, into the life of this ministry. May God remember you even when it is fulfilled. I will call you to come and witness that God has uh, fulfilled that word. Amen.